What's up my guys, what's up my girls? Happy and blessed day. I hope this video finds you well. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Daniel Flores, aka Danny Flo. That's what I call myself. Hopefully it'll catch on. Probably not. Most of my ideas don't, but that's okay. This is the Danny Flo vodcast, podcast, video podcast, whatever you would like to affectionately call it. This is my space where I, this is my safe space where I share my philosophy of life. I've made some episodes about philosophy. I've made some episodes about uh, family and fatherhood and marriage and religion because I'm hella, hella Catholic, uh, which is the best part about me, I think. And then also fitness. I'm a recreational weightlifter. I like to do the big three, squat, bench, and deadlift. But today, my guys and my girls, I'm going to keep talking about what I was talking about in the last episode which is Hispanic conservative values because we are in an election year and so I'm participating in the heightened political talk and since I'm a philosophy major I attend university part-time and I major in philosophy I see some philosophical implications in the election of course and in conservatism 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 I think I was mispronouncing that in the last episode. Anyways, and uh, also some philosophical implications in liberalism. So, last week I talked about the first Hispanic conservative value, which is God and worshiping God, both not just privately, but publicly. Today I'm going to continue. I'm going to talk about the second Hispanic conservative value. Before I get into that, however you may have found this video, go ahead and like the video so I can reach more people. Go ahead and subscribe. And most importantly, share it with at least one person. That way they too can tell me how wrong I am. Cool. So what is the second Hispanic conservative value? So as I stated in the last video, Mexicans are Hispanic because we speak Spanish. And I did my best to demonstrate that we've always been a religious people before we were culturally Catholic, right? Which is not necessarily devout about our Catholicism. It's just something that the Mexican at a personal level does it because probably his family does it. And the family does it because the society does it and the society values it. It's part of the culture, right? But before that, we were actually religious Catholics, right? We, we took it seriously. It was our religion we were top three countries that were catholic and in from 1926 to 1929 we fought our own government because they had anti-clerical anti-catholic laws and we weren't going to take that and we didn't right but before that before we converted to catholicism after 1531 through the miraculous supernatural apparition of the virgin mary as our lady of guadalupe that is how she appeared to us to our people before that we were religious pagans right we had multiple gods multiple deities and you can go to mexico and you can see the temples that we had built for those gods after 1531 we built temples for our lord jesus christ and we worshiped him every sunday all that to say that the second conservative value is starting and raising a family why well since we've always been a religious people there are certain things that we know about ourselves we live and we die right and in between our birth and our death right we are educated by other people and then we have our own experience right and the mexican people just like any other people right know that with age generally speaking not always unfortunately comes wisdom right so we've always have respected our elders right and we've looked to them for the wisdom that they've accrued over their life and that has been passed down right and then once we became catholic that just heightened right because in the first book of the bible this is something that we would have learned once we converted the first thing that god tells adam and eve is to be fruitful and multiply right to have children and so adam and eve had to raise those children 
teach them what they knew, right? Pass down any accrued wisdom. And then those children had to have learned from their own experience as well. And once they were of the age to have their own children, the cycle would repeat itself, right? Not only that, but the fourth commandment, right? Commandments one through three have to do with our relationship with God. We would have learned this when we converted from paganism. You have no other gods but the one true God. You do not take the Lord your God's name in vain and you keep the Sabbath holy. Before Catholicism was Catholicism, it was Judaism, so they worshiped on the seventh day. The Lord fulfilled the, Jew the Jewish law and he started the new covenant. The new day of the covenant is Sunday, the Lord's day. And so the third commandment now obliges us to worship every Sunday. And we, we do not as much as we used to do, unfortunately. So, but those first three commandments have to do with our relationship with God. The commandments four through 10 have to do with our relationship with each other. And the first commandment that has to do with our relationship with, the, with each other, has to do with our relationship with our parents. Honor thy father and thy mother. So the second Hispanic conservative value is also deep in history. Historically, before we were Catholics, we already respected our elders, right? The pagan priests, they weren't young people. They were older people that had received the accrued wisdom from a different elder and that had taken the paganism seriously and had the experience right with uh, Catholicism that just was elevated with um, what we find in the book of Genesis what we find in the first Ten Commandments and that's kind of why our last name is a big deal right because our last name uh, ties us to our parents, our grandparents, our elders, our ancestors, right? And we want to bring honor to our last name. There are good and bad stereotypes about all kinds of people, right? Uh, a stereotype is just something based off of a generalization, off of a simplification. I've mentioned this in previous episodes. So one of the stereotypes that's associated with Mexicans is that we're hardworking people. That's a good stereotype. It means that in general, the Mexican people are seen as hardworking people. There's other stereotypes that are bad. I'm sure that you can think of a number of them. But one of the stereotypes about Mexicans is we put our last name on everything, right? We'll have necklaces with our last name. We'll tattoo our last name, you know, across the forearm or, or anywhere. We'll put it on our cars. And if you notice, I also mentioned this about the first Hispanic conservative value, which was, you know, why do we have the Virgin Mary? Our Lady of Guadalupe on everything, on a gold necklace, tattooed. I even have a tattoo of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen of Heaven and Earth. But we also put them on our cars. We also wear, you know, T-shirts. Sometimes you can buy Virgin Mary socks, right? Because it's it's part of our values. It's the first one, and we put her on there because she converted us from paganism to Catholicism right? She changed history for us. That's why we, she brought us from worshiping multiple gods to worshiping the one true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the same thing with, with our last name. We put our last name because we're proud of our history, our heritage, our ancestry, right? We're part of, proud, not part. I mean, we are part of our lineage, but we're proud of our lineage. And so starting and raising a family is very, very valuable to us right we want to have kids we want to raise them how we see fit teaching them our values teaching them our history teaching them our tradition right passing on what we deem valuable right through our faith through our reason and we don't want anyone to stop us not even the government I ended last week's video by saying it's not that we want the government to make all 50 states in america catholic we just don't want them to stop us from practicing our faith both privately and publicly it's the same thing with starting and raising a family right we don't want the government to say you have to have x amount of kids 
right or you can't have over x amount of kids right and when you have your kids you can't teach them this you can't teach them that you can't say this right the government should only step in in rare cases when the parents are negligent or when they're abusive right and you can say that teaching them a certain thing a certain ideology or a certain value or a certain idea or a certain teaching or educating them a certain way is abuse right but you're gonna have to make the case for that like for example me as a father right as a religiously catholic father right i'm gonna raise my children catholic now when my children are adults if they look at the arguments for catholicism and the arguments against catholicism and if they want to renounce their faith that's up to them they're adults and then they would raise their children how they would want now i would probably try to persuade my son or daughter to raise their their children in the faith but trying to persuade is not the same thing as forcing right it's not the same thing as coercion right so we don't think that the government should tell us if we can start a family and if we can start a family how many kids we should have how many kids we shouldn't have what we should teach our kids the government should only step in when parents are being negligent which they currently do and abusive and i'm sure i'm missing other things i'm not like an expert social worker but that's one of the values right because i've said that mexico used to be one of the top three catholic countries there's other hispanic countries that are primarily catholic or primarily protestant christian and of course there's other hispanic countries that are a different kind of religion so these are right two the first two values that we're trying to conserve right we're trying to keep them safe but we don't want to keep them safe and protected right and guarded just so we can keep them to ourselves we want to keep them safe and guarded and protected and conserve them and preserve them so that we can pass them on to primarily our children but anyone that's willing to listen i'm 28 if you my guy or my girl are also 28 and you're willing to listen and you're willing to you know think about what i'm saying critically then you would also you know deem worshiping god privately and publicly and starting and raising a family and raising that family how you see fit as two things that are valuable and then you would conserve them and pass them on to primarily your children or anyone who's willing to listen to you and willing to listen to your reasons and i guess your arguments for them so i hope that helps my guys and my girls to introduce you to the second hispanic conservative value now the reasons that i shared are just the reasons that I could think of. I thought critically about it. It's like, okay, why do we want to start a family and raise a family, right? Because we've always been a religious people. We understand that with age, sometimes wisdom comes. We converted from paganism to Catholicism. Catholicism has certain teachings about uh, being fruitful and multiplying and honoring your father and your mother. And we are proud of our lineage our heritage that's why we a lot of times have our last names on on everything you could say that those are just historical examples but just because they're historical examples doesn't mean that they're not good reasons and even if you don't think that those are good reasons these are the reasons that convinced me if these reasons don't convince you there might be reasons out there that will convince you or there might not we all convince ourselves into the positions that we hold and even if you're not a conservative in the general sense of what conservative means leaning right politically culturally socially whatever even if you are some sort of liberal that things certain things should change once you change those things and you achieve what you want them to be changed to you're going to want those things to be conserved 
So we all have values that we want to conserve so that we can pass them on to our kids and our kids eventually will be parents they'll pass them on to their kids our families are the units of society so eventually we want them to be a value that the society conserves and that is part of the culture i hope that makes sense my guys and my girls remember to like the video if you liked the video if you found value in it make sure you subscribe so that you can watch all the cool youtube videos and igtv videos that i make for you guys which is my pleasure. And then, of course, share it with at least one person so that they can tell me how wrong I am. Uh, until next time, my guys and my girls, remember what Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen taught us. Your life is worth living. Love you, my guys and my girls. Bye.